Hey guys and welcome back. I'm Rachel O'Leary and if you've been watching my channel you know that this aquarium, my 150 gallon Asian hill stream, needs to be torn down and moved and that's what we're going to do today. You see it's in an area of the fish room that's very difficult to film and that's right next to my shipping station so I'd like to move it so that I can better utilize my space and have better visibility of this aquarium. So this is the end result and today I'm going to show you the process of breaking down and resetting up my 150 gallon modified hill stream aquarium. It is without a doubt my favorite aquarium in the fish room. I started by simply pulling out most of the plants that were on the various hardscape and catching fish as I could. Then I started to remove pieces of hardscape. This aquarium had about 30 pieces of wood and about 60 rocks all intertwined together in order to provide an environment for these fish and their specialized needs. Most of them come from hill stream waters, which means areas of very, very big flow with jumbles of boulders down to pebbles and a fine substrate. In my aquarium, I utilize river rock that I sourced locally and manzanita driftwood. There, uh, This tank has been running for almost four years and it was the very first build on my channel so it was very bittersweet to break it down. It took me probably four hours to break it down. Um, after I removed the plants and hardscape I siphoned it down so the water level was low so I could try and catch more fish. I took out the corner mat and filter. Um, this aquarium uses a corner mat and filter as well as an FX5 with upgraded tubing in order to create the flow that is so prevalent within the aquarium. Um, I rinsed out the mat and filter and kept it in a bucket of water to preserve the bacteria. I then finished vacuuming out the tank and removed the substrate scoop by scoop as the loaches were hiding deep within that substrate. We then moved the aquarium over to the other side of the fish room. It was exceptionally heavy and had some friends lift it onto the stand. So, we've run into a bit of a snag with the 150. Overall, it looks pretty good, but there's like a few slivers where if you shine a flashlight underneath it, you can see just a little bit of light. So to be on the safe side, because this is a 150 gallon aquarium, they're kind of expensive, the fish are really rare, and because the aquarium itself to replace is very expensive, we're going to, or Chris I should say, is going to put gussets in the corners of each edge of the stand as well as the middle and then we're going to place a board with cork spray adhered to it just to make sure no matter what this thing has adequate support on all edges. This is especially important with this aquarium because it is going to have a fair amount of rock in it and we would rather, much rather be safe than sorry. In the three and a half years this aquarium has been running, I've never cleaned this canister, so I thought while we were moving the aquarium, we would take the opportunity to do so. Take a look and see what's inside. Now because I use the corner mat and filter, I don't expect it to be particularly dirty. And I'm right, there's like nothing, but we'll go ahead and take the opportunity to rinse everything, clean out any snails, flush out the impeller, etc. so that when we set it back up it'll be at maximum flow. So we'll just drain it down, pull out all the filter media, give it a good rinse, spray out the inside of the canister, and it should be good to go. So I have a new Cricut, but more importantly I've gathered together some aquascaping materials, namely some large manzanita branches and a bunch of river rocks. Now these are some of the same rocks that I used when I did the hill stream the very first time. Um, because of the placement of the aquarium and what I've learned over the four years of keeping it, I am not going to use some of the largest rocks. Um, but I do need to take into consideration for these fish that in order for them to thrive, they do need to have rocks from like boulder size down to smaller stones um, in order for them to exhibit their natural behavior. So I'm going to start by playing around with the driftwood and then placing some rocks and then adding the substrate 
and really we'll just have to play it by ear. Now I'm going to try and set up multiple camera angles for you guys, but this aquarium is quite tall. Um, the goal was that the middle of the aquarium will be eye level, and you can see from my reflection there, that's what's going to happen. I think it's going to be pretty awesome. Now, I would really like to try and use this absolutely massive piece of manzanita, but I think in order to do so, I'm going to have to cut it because it is literally huge. Um, so I'm going to get a saw and we'll do that and see what we can do with it. So this piece is absolutely magnificent, but it's also absolutely massive. So what I'm going to do is cut it into two sections so that I can still use it together but it'll actually fit into the aquarium, hopefully. So looking at it, it seems like there's two main pieces, this branchy piece and this lower piece. So I think I'm going to cut it, oh geez, like right over here or right here in order to um, piece it back together inside the aquarium. Now most of these fish don't really come from areas that have a lot of wood, but this is an aquarium um, and I think the combination of wood and rock really can mimic that sort of jumble effect that happens in riffles and high speed areas in river systems. So I'd like to try and emulate that once again in my aquarium. Now a lot of my older wood is still usable, but it's certainly shrunk over the past four years, which is why I want to utilize this new bigger piece. So I'm going to cut it, I think maybe even right here, and then I can turn this piece and hope that it fits into the aquarium. So I have a sawzall. I have two pieces of wood and this will definitely fit and then I can piece this one in there too, incorporate some rocks and I think it'll be pretty cool. You shouldn't be afraid to cut your hardscape, break your rocks or change them to suit what you need. Um, I know it can be a bit intimidating especially with a piece like this. This is probably a $300 piece of driftwood but I need to be able to use it. Let's get it in the aquarium. So I usually start by placing my biggest pieces. I do have my rolling ladder here to try and make things a bit easier, but this is still going to be quite the cumbersome task, especially with this aquarium having a center brace. So it's going to be some fishing around to fit it. But there's no way this, would, this piece would have ever fit in this aquarium if I wouldn't have cut it. And I'm actually not sure still if it will. It's pretty freaking large. And I don't have a ton of clearance because of the ceiling. So I may end up having to break a bunch of branches because it's important that you leave enough space to actually be able to work in the aquarium as well. So the goal this time is to not take the hardscape quite as far over into that corner because it meant that I couldn't, um, couldn't clean that corner, which didn't end up being a big problem. But, you know, these fish come from waters that are exceptionally dilute and clear. So it's, a, it's important that I am able to maintain it as best as possible. Now, because this wood is so large, there's absolutely no way that I could pre-soak it. It's important as well to step back and take a look at what you're doing. I think that looks pretty cool. I'm going to need to put, put more 
Um, but I think I'm going to do rocks on that side over there. So I'm going to go ahead and throw my filter in. So the filter for this aquarium, if you're new here, is a corner matten filter, which just pops into these corner plastic braces that I have set up. And I did cut it into two pieces simply so that when I removed it, um, the substrate wouldn't fall into that back compartment. Now I can start playing with some rock over there. You know, I almost want to reverse this piece. Let me see if I can do that. So then I just spent probably about four hours playing around with the wood and the rocks, adding them, taking them out, putting them back in um, until I built something that I was happy with. Again, for these fish species, they really engage with their hardscape. Uh, a lot of the loaches will breed in between or underneath the rocks. The schooling fish in this aquarium like to have a place to spawn, so the plants on this hardscape will act as a spawning mop. So there's a lot to think about with the variety of species I have in here and I hope to put in here. I've also considered growing some plants out of the water, so I wanted to have some of the hardscape sticking up out of the aquarium. I think eventually that could make a really cool display. Now, actually physically fitting the rocks into the wood in a stable way took a lot of back and forth, and that's the main reason this took me so long. I also needed to make sure that I was going to be able to clean the glass, at least the front glass. I don't really worry about the back glass on this aquarium, and that I would have good nooks and crannies in order to wedge the plants that I plan to use for this aquarium. For the most part, I generally stick with really easy rhizome type plants, things like Anubias and ferns and African water fern, and often some crypts, maybe some Bucephalandras and things of the like. You guys know what plants I like, but I'll be sure to point them out as I do this. So there was a lot of back and forth and up and down on the ladder until I came up with something that I was relatively pleased with for the left side of the aquarium. So I decided to start it filling just because it takes forever to fill this aquarium. And while it was filling, I recovered the crypts from the carpet from the previous manifestation of this aquarium. They'd been sitting in the bucket for three days, so looked a little worse for the wear. But I went ahead and planted them anyhow on the right side of the aquarium. As the tank filled, I continued to add my Anubias, my narrow leaf java fern, some African water fern, some small Anubias petite, and just some odds and ends of plants that I already had around the fish room. I didn't purchase anything for this aquarium. I just used stuff that I had. So there's still some work to be done. But it was really important for me to get this aquarium quickly into a place that I could re-add my fish as they've been in the bucket for three days. Now I did add poly filter to absorb any ammonia. I did daily water changes and there was a high output bubbler on it. But these are hill stream species with very high oxygen needs, so time was really pretty critical at this point. As always, I wiped down the glass, took a net, collected any floating debris, and let it sit for a few hours to start to clear up. Then I remembered I had this really cool crypt balance that I have potted in a clay pot, and I could have taken it out of the pot in order to place it in the aquarium, but because the substrate in this aquarium is not very thick, I opted to leave it in the pot, remove a rock, and hide it behind the driftwood. I think that this will allow for this plant to do a bit better as the pot is full of a soil substrate and capped with gravel. I was very pleased with how it looked. Since it's relatively clear, I'm going to go ahead and add the fish back and then I'll fine tune the plants later.
Immediately upon introduction, the fish were all coloring right back up and really seemed to be settling in amazingly well. I was a bit concerned as many of these species are extremely sensitive, very expensive, and a bit rare. So here we are, about 12 hours after scaping and planting. I still have to finalize the lighting. Um, and I really want to add something in here. I suppose I should probably just wait for that crypt carpet to grow back in. It took kind of a beating vein in the bucket for a few days. Um, but the fish all made it through. I think the plants look pretty good. And for just using what I had here, I'm, overall I'm very, very pleased. I'm pretty excited to see how the fish do and restock this aquarium or finish stocking this aquarium now that I've learned a bit more about their needs and I've set it up a little bit differently for better maintenance as well as I think better behavior of the fish. Already um, everything is looking pretty good. Now at some point as well I may add some plants to that corner filter but if I'm being honest it really just doesn't bother me. One thing I am really pleased with is that that hole in the paint on the back of this aquarium is no longer visible as silly as it sounds um, I may eventually add some emergent plants up here too we'll have to see um, if I hook up lighting I may also grow plants out of the corner filter but all in all I think for just a day into this aquarium being set up Hillstream 2.0 is already a success. Um, I just love watching the plants move in the current. There's something so just neat about it. And that's why I really wanted to incorporate this larger crypt in here. I just think that's so cool. And seeing the movement back towards the other side of the aquarium in this crypt farm, really just very cool. Now over time, the red of this driftwood as that bark wears off will go away. But for now, I think it's, it's very, very pretty. What do you guys think? Let me know down in the comments. And stay tuned because this aquarium is going to be coming very soon. As always, thank you for your continued support.